All right, let's try these honeyberries because they look pretty darn ripe. But here's the thing. You know when they're ripe when they come right off the plant. These are not coming off. They've got good size. They're actually huge. Oh, this one came right off. It's such a beautiful berry as well. Look at that. I mean, this whole section of my yard is right on the main street and I think the whole thing's beautiful. Some people might disagree when they drive by. I think it's gorgeous. And this is a gorgeous piece of fruit. I mean, it really is like as blue as a blueberry, has got that really pretty bloom on it. And then you can rub it off and make it shiny if you want. This is really soft. Still a little firm though. I hope this is right. This side's soft. Other parts of it are a bit more firm. Wow. Guys, it's, it's a really good berry. People do not give it enough credit. It's up there. Here's the thing, right? Not the sweetest berry in the world, but it's so good with the, like an explosion of flavors. When it's perfectly ripe, it's got all this uh, water in it, because as they expand, they get more water, they get more flavor. It really is like a kiwi, but not as sweet. Think about a kiwi and how that explosion of berry, weird kiwi flavor, right? It tastes like that, but even more wild, better flavor than that, but not as sweet. And I've said in the past, it tastes like a kiwi plus a grape. It still kind of does taste like a kiwi plus a grape, but just not very sweet. And uh, it doesn't have to be that sweet, actually. I think it doesn't need any be, to be any sweeter. I've been trying to find a variety that was sweeter, but that was really good. And I would say that berry right there is probably approaching a nine out of 10, which is crazy because I think it's better than the raspberry. I think it's about as good as a strawberry. It's not as good as a Marion berry, but it's close. It's one of my favorite berries. It's up there with the Gumi as well, I think. I think the Gumi beats it. But it's in my top five easily of berries that exist. I think they're, uh, you know, blueberries are good. Eh, I don't know if I can put it above a blueberry, but it's, dude, it, ah, I'm telling you, you have to grow that. You do. And people don't give it enough of a chance I didn't give it enough of a chance, but I've been documenting these plants for years and I'm hoping that they become productive, but I didn't give up. And I said to myself, they're gonna be good. These people who have been promoting them are not lying. Why would they lie to us? And I'm right. That's a real, they're right. It was a really good berry, worth growing. So I figured I'd show you guys the different ripeness levels of this particular fruit. Uh, these are actually as I think four or five different varieties of honeyberry that I have here on my property. Not all of them are ripe. Not all the berries here that I picked are ripe. So there's not only a difference in, in genetics, but there's a difference in the level of ripeness. And I would argue the biggest problem with this fruit is a lack of information on, on when exactly it is ripe and ready to be picked. Any of these fruits that you grow would not be tasty would not be worth growing if you pick them all at the wrong time. You know, it's only until they're really perfectly ripe are they actually an amazing piece of fruit. That's why we don't buy fruit at the store because they pick it early before it's not an optimal piece of fruit with the maximum amount of flavor and nutrients. So the honeyberry here, or these, this bowl of honeyberries I have, are at different, different states here. We have some that are quite small and uh, these smaller ones are quite hard and firm and have not really swelled up and um, received a lot of the, actually the water that goes into these fruits. And let's say if I were to eat this, and it's not even fully blue, by the way, if you look at the other sides of it, maybe we could argue that one side of this is blue, but 
the other side of it is definitely not. And that's also not an, you know, an indication that it's not ripe. So I'll try that. Really firm, very sour, very tart. Almost no sweetness, almost no water content either. Now where this really starts to get interesting is when they start to get really big like this. This one here is bigger than my thumbnail. And not every variety is gonna get this big, but here's actually two different varieties side by side. You can see the difference in the shape. It's pretty extreme. One's more an oval, the other one's more of a, a round circle, if you could say. And they're both expanded. They have the blueberry color that you're looking for. They've expanded over time. All the juice is inside of it. And they should be relatively sweet at this point. When you get the color right and the softness, and they come right off the bush. That's the other key. A lot of people, when they when they grow these fruits, you know, you're you're letting the, you're picking the fruits before they're ready to come off. You're actually picking the fruits instead of letting them come off. What a ripe honeyberry really will just barely come off without any really sort of force at all. In fact, they may even fall on the ground. When you start seeing a lot of them start to fall on the ground, and they look like this, you know, not these little ones here that don't have uh, the right color and I have other problems with them. You know, that's, that's what you're looking for. And then you can come in there and really shake the bush and they all just come off. You don't even have to pick the fruits. So this is really what you're looking for. And uh, I wanna, I actually wanna cut these open with the knife to show you what the inside should look like. Because I think that's another key indicator. Kind of looks like a grape. And I've also seen, you know, some of these have like raspberry or jam-like consistencies on the inside. You can see it's starting to get kind of jammy there towards the bottom. That's where it's soft. So that's very good. And what I've noticed when they're, they are really ripe, you'll get an explosion of that flavor because the the skin's popping, and the inside is really where all that juice is and all that flavor is. Here's the other one, the inside of that. And now that's maybe not even perfectly right, but it's it's close. Yeah. That one's quite sweet, actually. Let's try another one that's a little bigger. I saw one that a bird got to and it opened up the the inside, cut it in half, and it looks a lot like jam, like I've seen on some of my figs. Really quite impressed with this fruit. This one again, probably at the same ripeness level. Yeah. And then again, some of these other ones here, like these, this small one seems ripe. Let's cut this open. Even though it's small, it does have the right color and it seems right. Mm -hmm. That one was quite sour. I'm trying to find one that really isn't very ripe. I guess this is kind of a way to tell, right? Is that the top of it, you can see the inside there. So the top of it looks very firm and very different than the flesh down below. It seems like they ripen from the bottom up. And the top of it is really, like I said, quite firm and really probably a sign that this is not ripe. It's not ready just yet. And then I would imagine maybe the whole thing needs to turn you know, sort of fleshy rather than maybe uh, more fibrous like it is there at the top. That's what I really like about these. They're intense berries. They're not mild, just simple sweet berries. They have some real complexity to them. And I've, overall, I've been very impressed 
as you guys showed, I showed you guys with those uh, on the bush in the beginning of this video. I think uh, you guys really should be, just be a bit more patient and this will all work itself out. They're wonderful, wonderful pieces of fruit and I'm happy to have them. So, mm, that one was quite sweet. We'll see you guys soon, all right? Hope you enjoyed this one. Take care.